Hello everyone and welcome to the first VOD review of the Overwatch League 2023. We've had some banger matches come through. The final bracket has been decided and I'm going to just Scott. spoil it now because... Alright, first of all, let me get this out of the way actually. I have enabled chat to continue to use the shut up Scott function because it should be funny. But they, if they abuse this power chat then there is potential that it gets taken Shut away. Up, Scott. Okay, so let's just remember that. So if Shut you, up, Scott. YouTube, I, as chat, Shut as, up, you, Scott. YouTube, Shut as up, you listen to this, I want you to remember that, let me Shut know up, in the Scott. comments if you think Shut I should up, turn Scott. this off because, chat! Shut up, Scott. Shut up, Scott. We'll see Shut how up, this goes, is what we're saying. Because we got a VOD review. I also let Shut chat up, Scott. decide through Shut democracy. Up, democracy is a, is a mistake. Democracy is a mistake. We let chat decide which VOD review we are going to do. We're only going to do one from the Pro-Am. It is going to be the Los Angeles Gladiators taking on the Atlanta Reign. People did not want to watch the Grand Finals. They wanted to watch the Gladiators take on the Atlanta Reign because it was it was probably one of the best matches that happened in the Shut bracket. Up, it, is, it is a great match. Uh, but, you know, obviously, spoilers... The Florida Mayhem did go through and had a dominant run through the bracket to win 4-2 over the Gladiators. So it was awesome to see them get the win. But it, it was a pretty one-sided finals. Obviously, Gladiators showed some signs of life and it was competitive. But I think this Atlanta Reign versus Gladiator match was probably the best match of the tournament. And Chad agreed. So that's why we are here. Bo, not now. So let's just get into it. That was a long intro. So let's get into this match. It's, uh, it's a banger. Right now, so let's enjoy this one. Let's turn Cassis down. We don't want them to be too loud. God, chat, that was difficult. You know how hard it is to to say words when you guys are just just spamming shit all the time. Holy cow! Uh, I think we probably want my camera here. Oh, God. Does that stay in the vids? That is going to be in the vids. This, this is all going to be in the video. I don't do much editing and cutting up my videos. If you're first, if you're new to one of my VOD reviews, this is literally just taken from Twitch. So you get the live, uncut version of uh, these VOD reviews. So you can enjoy it uh, along as we do as well. So it's a bit of fun. Yeah, chat has too much power. They they might lose that power. I was talking about how democracy is good, and I was giving you guys an opportunity. And poof, man, that was that was difficult. Are you using contenders for quality? I am not. I don't. I, the quality seems quite good here. Is the contenders quality better? On the VOD? That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. It is? Okay. Okay. Wait, they, do they not have the VODs? Oh, yeah, never mind. They haven't cut the VODs. They haven't cut the VODs. Sorry. We're just going to go with this. Why doesn't the official stream? All right. So I can actually speak to that real quick because I'm sure that's going to be a question that's here. Uh, the reason that the uh, Overwatch League stream doesn't get the same level of quality as Overwatch contenders is due to some like ad stuff of it reduces the quality to whatever the ads is going to be or some shit. So it's something to do with the Overwatch League uh, main channel and the way that it has ads attached to that channel makes it so that it reduces the quality of the main broadcast, which is just ridiculous, but how it's been explained to me. So let's talk about this match because the Atlanta Reign and the Los Angeles Gladiators, two great teams. Atlanta Reign were favorited going into this tournament. Gladiators, Scrimbucks exchange was going quite poorly and people were worried about how strong this Gladiators roster was going to be. And no, I, I personally had Atlanta Reign 3-0-ing the Los Angeles Gladiators, which in hindsight, you know, wasn't a great shout. But this, this sort of style by the Atlanta Reign playing lip on the Sombra, and really just playing an oppressive, aggressive style was the one thing that got me, got them through the group stages quite cleanly. It's just very hard to deal with. You can see they're currently just like shutting down the Gladiators quite hard with Lip Somber and just how quickly he farms these EMPs, how they coordinate around diving on the hack targets, all that type of stuff. So, God, Chio so good. And Chio, like the whole roster, like Chio field a backline from the Dallas Fuel last year. Stork has been having an incredible year so far i talked about it on uh the broadcast but stalker is a player who 
didn't see a lot of playtime in his rookie year because he was playing under profit. Literally the greatest player of all time, in my opinion, to touch Overwatch. So now that he's a starter and he is that tracer player for Atlanta Rain, he's really been showing what he has. And even in these losses that he they had uh, in this match, you know, Stalker had a great series. But Kevster, Kevster gets the Pulse Bomb on the fielder, and that's really the, like, big thing that really helped the Gladiators is that Kevster's Tracer form right now is absolutely bonkers, right? He gets Chio as well. He killed the he killed the back line, like, pretty much alone. And he just puts out so much pressure. And that's so important for the Gladiators because that sort of enables Kai and Dante to play the game a little bit better. Kevin was fucking, dude. Kevin Overwatch it was just different. If Violet gets another finals appearance, he has to be the GOAT. Uh, the, I think the difference that we you, you'd always have between, like, Prophet and other players is that, like, yeah, Violet is the GOAT, but Violet was also a part of one of the strongest rosters to ever play the game, which was 2019 and 2020 San Francisco Shock. I think Prophet... The thing that makes Prophet so impressive is he's never always had the best players around him, right? And he's had some success, obviously, 2018, but... He's been one of the best players on every team that he's ever been, even when his team hasn't been successful. I say any team he's ever been, it's, it's Seoul in London, but... I guess last year was like an anomaly because they had a good roster, but they didn't really go very far. But that's a completely different conversation. Oh, like, that's irrelevant to this series. I think it, it was interesting because obviously Donghak had a lot of fans coming from the group stage and we starting to see him and, you know, get our opinions of him. Didn't have a great series in this Gladiators matchup, in my opinion. Man, Dante getting slept was, like, iconic for the pro -Am. Dante actually plays... Wait, who did he stick? I feel like I didn't even see. I uh, fucking... Uh, Dante plays Winston in a very interesting style. He's just a very selfless player. It's like how he's always been as a player. Oh, he, he will do whatever it takes to help the team win. And if that means jumping in, getting slept, and getting blasted, then he's going to do that. Like, Dante's death counts has to be one of the highest out of all the tanks in this tournament per 10. But it sort of works for the Gladiators. So you can't really... You can't really over... You can't really underappreciate that. It was a magnet, right? Dante trusts Kevster to take the space he creates. Yeah, and that's it, right? And when Gladiators looked the worst was when Dante was doing that and they weren't following up. They weren't getting that punish as well. So it just felt like Kevster's trying to play 1v9. You know, Dante's feeding because you know his backline's just getting rolled and Kai wasn't really hitting shots. So you can see a very different Gladiators team when it all sort of clicks. It's interesting that we saw very little ball in general in this pro-am. Like, Donghak was one of the players who tried to play it the most. Good, good boop on a battle. Dante is selfless tank and someone to go kill tank. Yeah, you know, I, I talked about that in the grand finals of someone gets a lot of resources and is really expected to be that guy who's in it and sort of finding the value. Why Dante is less of that. Like le Dante is not expected to get as many final blows in the way that they play very different styles. Kev still finds someone, dude. Kev finds value anywhere. I don't think anyone thought Glads were going to get it. Yeah, like when when Glads lost this, oh well, spoilers. When Glads lost this map, it was it was a really big question, right? Of like, oh god, Glads are just going to fall over. Oh, wow, that's such a good stick. Like that that it looks easy, but it's such a difficult stick to hit. I think Dante did a good job adapting how he played throughout the tournament. Yeah. My only problem that I had with Dante tanking in this bracket stages was some of the swaps. Like, the Junker Queen swap had me confounded on that attack. I would love to hear from Dante of, like, why he went Junker Queen. Because that felt like such a throw. 
It was, and his Sigma as well, I think is a good is a good point. His Sigma is not as good as some of these other teams. Like uh, Gladiators were actually incredibly weak at the Sigma compositions. I don't think they won Havana. Like they they played. I was actually surprised that the Gladiators chose Havana over the Houston Outlaws. Uh, sorry, I, when they picked it and they lost it so terribly against the Houston Outlaws, I was shocked that they picked it against the Florida Mayhem because it didn't look good when they played against the Houston Outlaws. So I thought they were going to have something special, but, you know, Florida played it very strangely. That was a weird Havana by uh, Florida, but once again, Gladys just did not look that comfortable on that map. Spoilers, I guess. That's an important thing here. It, this is not a, I'm going to go through the whole series and I'm not spoiling it. This has spoilers riddled through it. I'm, I'm not just going to talk about this match. I'm going to talk about the Prime as a whole. This review is more of a, Pro am review while you know highlighting this game the most. Was there a map pool? Yes, uh, I think there are some maps that weren't in. And really well set up dive from the gladiators who played that at a deficit, which is something really hard to do. So that is some communication really helping them out. As here comes the minefield onto that back line. That was a great coordination across. Dude, Kevsa gets another one with a pulse bomb. He just goes absolutely sicko mode. Range with assistance from Dante and the shield, but they aren't in the midst of it. Kevsa with the pulse bomb also guarantees that they deny the sound barrier. Kai hit by this in a very critical sense with only 11 hp gets assistance from the support line and again the bell being their clutch bruce 66 was out yeah yeah again to reset for kai to take the pick it's also the brigitte as well having funny astro in this scenario to be able to pocket the bell and pocket kai in these scenarios where dog Hag is getting in aggressive oh, you can basically guarantee yourself that you're going to be getting inspire procs and gladiators are at 80 percent uh, just trying to find a way to get this emp as atlanta bot review all right, how many games this weekend didn't start with Ilios? I think a lot of people just really liked Ilios. Because I think Nepal and Lijiang Tower are very strange maps because you have you have a lot of issues when it comes to like playing. Like the brawl, the rounds are very different. While Ilios plays pretty much the same across all three rounds. Dude, Chio. Just a monster. Who do you think is the best Lucio from this weekend? I feel like Astro, people are going to say Astro just on the back of like he played a lot of series and he had some good moments, but I think it might have been Chio from what I watched. Chio was really good on the Winston, uh, on the Lucio. Chorong was also a good shout as well, actually. I, I forgot about it. I, I didn't even think to Chorong. I think like Chio, Chorong, and Funny Astro would be the three that stood out the most to me. Chorong best Lucio in the league. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Lucio is a hard one to like really get a gauge of, especially with like how the spectating has been working. Because you only really see them during the big moments, but Lana Rain takes the first map pretty convincingly. Just very strong in that Winston matchup uh, head to head versus the Gladiators. Kessel was really the only one finding like too much value in that map, but Lee J got you ignore every time he feeds yet. That, but that happens a lot. So. Newcastle's really good spot. Dude, they had some banger matches, right? We also did see that Astro is out and Lastro is in, so that screams to me double support look coming in from the Glads, most likely going to be... Ignoring 98% of his gameplay, yeah. Vindheim and Lee Jagon didn't look great, yeah. Yeah, true. Vindheim was, uh, Vin was quite surprising to me. You know what it is, Ping? It is the San Francisco shock. They get a pass for now because anything you say just gets countered with it was Ping, it was issues that they're having. So I, I don't really want to talk about the shock that much because I just think the shock is such a, a weird narrative to talk about because it's there. It's not really an even playing field. So it's just not even worth discussing it. We'll talk about them when we start seeing them and they're on low Ping. And if they keep struggling, then we can start talking about it more realistically. Ping plus 4 a.m. plus ratio, yeah. Like, that's what they're doing, but I mean, it feels like the Brigitte... The Shock actually looked much improved. Yeah, they obviously they had a very close game against the Houston Outlaws, so... It's obviously, again, I talked about this in the last series. It's good at, like, helping out the Tracer because um, armor packs are really adept... Because surely the Glads win after beating Atlanta. Yeah, surely there's no one, no really good pink teams on the other side of the bracket. 
All right, so Elena Reen subs in Hawk, and this is something that they have actually they've actually sort of shown in the past where they play this like Anna Zen uh, with the Diva. Something to keep your eye on, and I sort of highlighted this when I was watching this match uh, the first time. Vigilante and Fielder synergy felt very strange. It didn't feel like they were on the same page, and they actually get isolated individually because they're not really supporting each other as much as you kind of need to when you're playing this double flex support, right? Like, th this is this is a prime example of one of them, right? Like, Vigilante goes... To, like, this is a fine play, seeing them rotate to the left, and then, like, you're taking the point and going to the right, but Fielder's just still at choke, and he just solo dies to Kevsa. Like, that can't really happen at this level. It's fine to play this aggressive Zenyatta style, but it needs to be coordinated with each uh, with each other. Boston Social Media League, the first half of the schedule. Okay, that's cool. I, I don't really want to sort of talk about that right now. Yeah, now Vigilant is deep. That was such a crazy trade that he got on Kevsa, but it doesn't really lead to much. Oh, Lastro just like... Lastro should have died for that. positioning and looks to just collapse onto the bell there is a trade out for bold cassidy so they are eliminated from the equation they're still gaining percent as the fight wavers to the side some contention available because of kevster and this is just now all finally falling apart gladiators able to recover and deny rain from getting any more Nana was used onto Babel though, and, or from Babel onto Babel. Lashra is an interesting signing coming in for the Gladiators with the double flex support. It, 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 it didn't look as good as I thought it was going to be from time to time, but I just, maybe it's just like I don't like this setup from both of these teams where if you want to play double flex support, you have to sub a player in. I feel like it heavily limits what you can do in a round. Like, it's not a big problem on a map like... Um, once again, Fielder can pretty much on an island alone. I don't know where even know where Vigilante is. If, yeah, Vigilante is like flanking down the thing. Like, I, yeah, like I don't really like what's happening with Vigilante and Fielder here. But I, I feel like it just limits what you can do uh, when you have to sub in a player to play double flex support. Basically, free farming that backline a lot of the time and given a lot of space, which is if there's someone who I don't want to give space to on Tracer, it is Kevster. So I wonder if we do see some changes coming in from the Atlanta range to maybe put a little bit more... Do Glads really have to sub out Funny Astro? Well, the thing is, I don't think it's just for the Brig. Like, Lastro is not coming in to just play the Brig. He comes in to play... Like, he could easily switch to Zenyatta in the same way and play this similar setup to uh, the Atlanta rain. But that was a lot of ultimates for Atlanta to close it out. Kevs the Pulse Bombs, dude. Kevs the Pulse Bombs... So many times just opened up the team fight for the gladiators. I feel like that's why Florida is so successful. Their backline can play anything without subs. Their whole roster can play anything without subs. We didn't see um, the Sauna the entire weekend, right? Like they they literally played the same five plays the whole time. And I teams that are, have that setup are going to be stronger because just pre-existing synergy goes a really long way of just having the same five players. Obviously, it can be difficult to to have that sort of player pool uh, and hero pool. But if you can pull that off like the Houston Outlaws, it's definitely worth it. Glad's played Brig this time, but against Mayhem, they played the Zen. Yeah, it, it felt like Gladiators really wanted to play that Zen Yada and it didn't work very well. Like last row playing that Zen Yada, same on Havana, just wasn't good against the Florida Mayhem. She felt like he's just getting punished. Does make you wonder why they need Sauna? Because they need to hit a six-player cap, right? And, like, there are times in which you might need Sauna to play, given certain metas and stuff like that, because at the end of the day, Merit is very purely a hitscan player. So if I think if you decided to not play hitscan, you could play Sauna checkmate, and I think it would look good. Like, if you end up in a Genji Tracer meta. Good stick. Dude, how many sticks has Kevsu got just this map so far? Yeah, Vigilante gets aggressive. They nano him, but I'm able to find anything. Does Merit have a Tracer? I don't think so. I think he has a Tracer, right? But I don't think it's... I don't think it's the level that it needs to be. I think you'd feel a lot more comfortable bringing Sauna in and having, like, Checkmate play the Tracer or Sauna, you know, play the Tracer, right? What is Kev's Chastry? We don't have the numbers on us right now. 
especially in terms of their ultimate economy, not looking too... Yeah, like, I, I would expect that Merit wouldn't be on this team to ever have to play either a flex DPS or a tracer. And that's the whole point Sauna's on the team. I remember talking to Goomba about it, and he, he rates Sauna very highly. He's, it's just, like, I remember, he, I was like, oh, I don't see much Sauna. And he was sort of saying, like, yeah, Sauna's good. It's just there hasn't been a hero pull for him yet. Yeah, like, yeah, that's a good point by Beam. Like, everyone can play Tracer, but they, you have to be better than just being able to play Tracer. You need to be able to play Tracer against the best players in the world. And I think, I think an example from here, and I don't, I, I don't want this to feel like he's catching a straight, but I think Lethal really struggled. Obviously, his entire team struggled. Lethal's a good Tracer, but is his Tracer going to be able to match up against... You know, the Stalkers, the Kevsters, the Propers of the world, right? Because it needs to stack up against those players because that's how you be competitive. Wasn't he picked up for the... He was picked up for the Tracer, right? But, you know, he needs to prove that he can play to this level. I think his first showings just weren't great. And I don't think it's just on him that the London Spitfire lost, but... He wasn't the problem, but he also wasn't the solution. Backbone Tracer better. You know, obviously Backbone's Tracer has looked okay in the past, so. I saw people mentioning Tracer concerns about Houston. I think uh, I, there was Tracer concerns about Houston before we saw Pelican play Tracer. Pelican's Tracer is just fine. Like, Pelican's Tracer was not the reason the Houston Outlaws lost, in my opinion. If I, if I was citing an issue that I think the Outlaws had, I actually think the backline. Oh, surprisingly, I think the backline kind of didn't have as good a moments in the match that they lost. Obviously, it will, it, they were playing against an incredible Gladiators, but... I actually think Pelican's been playing really well on the Tracer. Which tank in the Pro-Am looked the best? It has to be someone. Just has to be someone. Someone showed the most flexibility while also being, like, the best Winston. Don't you dare say who. Don't you dare say who. But so did Gladiators in that fight. They do have a high noon to work with. They also have a nano relatively soon, but they need to be able to string two fight wins together to be able to hold. Kai gets Stalker. That's a nice way to start, though. Stalker. Shut up, Scott. Though they do have still a pretty decent close spawn. Dante. Oh, wow. Nice right click. I think Fearless was the best Winston. Yeah, obviously, you know, Fearless is fucking sick as well. But, like, we're, if we're... Yeah, I guess maybe saying someone played the best Winston. Maybe his teamwork around his Winston was the best and Fearless was the best Winston. But I think someone is... Without a doubt, someone was the best tank in the Prime. Maybe saying best Winston is also a bit of a stretch. He, he was definitely one of the best Winstons, but the best, you know, there was some great Winstons. Someone on SIG was like watching God create the universe. Let's just slow, slow our roll a little bit. It was good, but you know, we're not, we're not, we're not universe creating out here, you know. <laughs> let's, just, let's just, let's just pull back on the reins a little bit. Dude. Vigilante has gotten so many nanos. Bonk. This was around the time that I was like, okay, Kai, we're starting to see some good looks from Kai. And Lip honestly didn't take over this game as much as I was expecting him today. I was saying last season that someone should be a sleeper roll star pick, and I think people are just starting to realize it now. Well, sleep someone was a sleeper roll star last year. Like, I, there were people who were putting someone in their roll stars. Like, someone legitimately pulled that that, that uh, Florida Mayhem roster to heights that no one really expected from them. Yeah, like, people saying someone deserved over Huddy. Obviously, Huddy is, like, a fan favorite, but, like, someone was great last year. Like, I don't... I think some people were saying, like, oh, no one expected someone to be this good. I think everyone knew someone was going to be good on this Florida Mayhem squad. And now that they've surrounded him with great players, right? Of like the addition of Chorong and Merritt has just, you know, the results are in the, in the finals, right? 
Wasn't RuPaul fucking off even more than someone? Well, RuPaul, like, in the playoffs? In this hit? Yeah. In the grand finals, absolutely. And that's why RuPaul got the MVP. But we're not talking about RuPaul. And we're not talking about supports, right? How hot, Reiner got a roll star over someone is critical. He, no. Wait, oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. We need a pause because otherwise we're going to just, like, get sidetracked. Reiner deserved roll star. Man won two tournaments. Reiner was great. You can you can say whatever you want about Reiner in the third stage, in the fourth stage, whatever, but Reiner was a large proponent of why the Gladiators won two stages last year, and he absolutely deserved the roll star that he got. Just getting he was very good. That's what we're hoping. As we are entering now into this... Can you imagine the Blizzard Arena doing that? Oh. Yeah, like, right, yeah, and that's it. Reiner in the fourth stage was fine as well, right? Like, he, he wasn't bad. I guess without the tournament, I just wasn't one thinking. But I think people look at that, was it Summer Showdown, the Jotes meta, and, like, hold that solely against Reiner, and I, I don't think that's fair. Easily as they look to be on the defensive side and see if they can hold them back with Hawk now coming out onto the Diva. And one of the things that we didn't get to touch on really is Vigilante specifically on this Indiana on the offense. We don't see it too much on the offensive end. It is, you know, good on this map in particular because you have the long sight lines everywhere you go. But on the defensive end, it's even more deadly. And Vigilante has gotten a couple of volleys that the Gladiators weren't expecting. And you can see Vigilante playing so well around the architecture here, utilizing and sticking close. A couple of decent chips of damage coming in, though, from Gladiators to force them back. Getting some decent space almost has the initial tick. They need to come back in to try. I really like this Anna Kiriko setup from the Gladiators. I'm surprised they didn't play it as much. Hawk is just murdering kids, though. Seeing a lot of this defense matrix utilizing the support coverage, he gets two, then rotates back. Hawk just completely assisting, even though dude, Hawk is just killing everybody. What, what, Tony, oh, what do you think is better, comps than Anna or Kiriko Anna? I think it depends on the map. I like Zenana on this map because I think you can play pretty safe and I think you can get value out of the Zenyatta. But like on the second point, I think Zenyatta's a throw. Like I think trying to play offensive Zenyatta on second point is so difficult because you just get punished left and right. The thing that Kiriko does well is that Kiriko provides space rather than, you know, the rest of your team, which like removes space. Like playing Zenyatta sort of removes space from you, but allows you to play more defensively. I actually really liked the Nano Cassidy to counter the Nano Winston. I thought it was an interesting matchup. Because a lot of teams uh, like to do that, uh, especially the Boston Uprising. It felt like the Boston Uprising were nanoing Birdering on cooldown. Yeah, Dante's just taking so much damage. You really want to get that primal. It's a good kill by, Ke by Kai, though. Nah, this was such an important sleep. Just, just, it's not just the fact that it canceled the high noon because the high noon wasn't super valuable, but just giving, that's like five seconds in which Lip isn't shooting and pumping out damage. That gave so much space to the rest of the team. Like, I don't even know where that sleep came from. I think it was at Archers, but such a big sleep. How do you feel about Diva? I like Diva. I, I think Diva is good if you're going to play the Zen Ana, because if you're playing the Zen Ana, you're playing a greedy backline comp, right? So you kind of need the Diva to be able to peel for them because Diva peels a lot better than Winston does, but obviously Diva doesn't have as good of aggression as Winston does. So it, that's the cost benefit of playing the Diva. But if you're going to play the Zenana, I like the setup. The big issue that I have with the Zenyatta Ana, and this was something that I, I was upset about the Gladiators when they played against Boston in the group stages, is if you play Zenana and a Diva, Widow picks kind of fuck you. Because they have, look at Atlanta, they have no answers to this. Kai gets shots like these. All he has to do is start hitting shots every now and then. The only person who can deal with it is Stalker, and Stalker has to go through Lastro and Babel and everyone to get to the Widow. So just even if Kai doesn't hit shots, the threat of the Widow just forces the backline to play completely differently. And that's I, that's where I think the backline is going to show it. Like, the only reason the Zenyatta Ana are hiding in this saloon here is because the Kai is on Widow. Sadly, Kai rarely hit the shots. Yeah, but like, uh, fear of the Widow. And Kai will hit shots eventually, and that's why these players have to respect them. 
So what should Atlanta do here? In a perfect world, Vigilante would switch Kiriko. In my opinion, Vigilante switches Kiriko, and I think you can play keep the Diva, but I think it, it's just difficult. Also, the lip switch to Sombra is really good as well, actually. Lip on Cassidy is nowhere near as strong. Switch lip to Sombra, so then he can help Stalker dive. Um, and then if Vigilante is struggling to stay alive against everything, you can switch the Kir switch over to Kiriko and play that Ana Kiriko. about Winston in this scenario uh, against something like a diva where it's like you get a lot of peel specifically from the diva that we've been able to make I noticed that Ke Glad's rarely won when Kev Yaki even when Yaki and Kev were pounding what do you think is the reason for this probably the synergy of that dive just wasn't right there because Yaki Sombra actually looked quite good uh I don't know if we see that in this series but I actually like the Yaki Tracer Sombra Kev's to set up I, it, it actually looked quite, pretty good, but I, I, I'm not sure. I can't, re can't remember exactly why it didn't work off the bat. I don't really have a two cents to give you on that one. But it did look good. Like, I remember when they subbed in Yaki, I was like, ooh, Kevsi Yaki, what are we doing here? But the Tracer Sombra setup was good. I like Kai switching over to the Hanzo as well. Like, I, like this is just good counter stratting by Kai. Like... They go if they go Sombra, I can't play. All of a sudden, I can't play Widow anymore. You just go Hanzo, so you you still have that threat because Sombra really does have to respect. Uh, you you have to respect the Sombra, but the Sombra has to respect the Hanzo because you they're gonna hit the shot if you just try and free fire. So anything that has like punish potential, but more survivability than a Widow is good. They just weren't set up anywhere near. Like, Gladiators were not set up enough for that EMP. I don't know if they just didn't expect the EMP, but it's the freest EMP Lip's ever going to get. The synergy on Atlanta Rain is is quite immaculate, the way that they do their dives. What Glad's player surprised you the most? I really liked Babel. Like, I think Babel, like, had some, like, good moments. He definitely had some feeding moments, but you could see why he was in over Lastro from time to time. He had some really big, big clutch sleeps and clutch moments. Um, but also, I, I, I want to give a shout out to Kai because I was pretty critical of Kai going out of the group stage, and I think he really stepped it up in the, uh, in the bracket. Oh. Kai and Kevster felt like the MVPs to me. I it, it, I think Kevster is more of an MVP in this tournament than like... Kev, if Gladiators had any other Tracer that wasn't like Kevster or Striker, I don't think... I don't think... They, w they get that far this far in the tournament. They probably lose to Atlanta if they don't have a tracer of Kevs' caliber. Like, Kevs just went fucking s a sicko mode the entire bracket stage. This rush is so much damage. And this was so smart by Kevster to not clear. Like, it, right here, right, is why Kevster... Right here is why Kevster is so good, right? They're shutting down the tanks. Kevster goes in. I think he goes in solo because Dante dies, right? He goes in solo and kills the Ana and the Zenyatta. Watch this. Gets the Zenyatta, then goes for the Ana, kills the Ana. That's in like three clips. He kills both backliners. Any like any other like Tracer player, if you go for that and you don't kill Vigi off the rip, then Hawk lives to tell the tale and everything is fine. Kevster closes out this fight for them just because he kills the backline on his own. And that's what makes Kevs to the great and one of the best players in the world. Did Zen not get dinked by Kiri? I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, we, we can look for you. I don't think he gets dinked by Kiri. I think the only assist comes in from... Oh, is, was that a dink? No, I think it's just the rush. Yeah, he's just in the Katsune rush. So that's why the Kiriko gets the, the assist. Is Kevster good on any other character? Yeah, Kevster's a great flex DPS player. He plays Tracer and all flex DPS players. Alright, 1-1. One, one. Oh, 
All right, now we go over to Havana. Wow, Gl Gladiators played Havana a lot. I don't remember Gladiators playing Havana on Atlanta. I wish I had remembered that and referenced that. Did Gladiators win this map? Did Gladiators go 0-3 on Havana? I actually don't remember. I hope we don't get Winston. I really don't. I can't remember what happened. We'll, we'll work out what happens in this map, but yeah. Glad's win this one? Oh, okay. Interesting. Full of hold? No, that you're thinking of the uh, Toronto game. I think, I think I remember this this map. Yeah, I I, I think I remember the third point. Why is Donghack actually in this map? My assumption is that they don't want to play the Sigma Mirror. They want to play. I think they want to play a dive. They don't want to take the head-to-head -head matchup. Because I don't think he plays Sigma here, right? Doesn't he play Ball? This is an epic rain collapse, yeah. I think this is this is Atlanta rain feel, showing confidence in their own Sombra comp, and they believe that if they play this Sombra ball, they don't have to try and take this like Sigma matchup. Which, you know, the Sigma matchup and Widow matchup is a double-edged sword. And we saw that in the Toronto match where there was a full hold into a fuller hold just because Hydron just like didn't get value on Widow on the attack, and they just weren't able to find picks. So. We're also getting the Moira Kiriko, which was an interesting... <laughs> I, I don't know where this Moira Kiriko shit came from, but it's toxic, and I I, I need people to stop. Dude, I, so I don't... Like, Lastro, I don't know what Lastro is doing here. I, Lastro, you know you're playing against a Wrecking Ball Sombra. I don't know what Lastro is doing in No Man's Land over here. Even if he didn't die literally instantly, he was probably going to be in trouble. Kai does trade back for Lip, though, which is a big kill. Mori Kiriko feels like a throw. I don't think it's a throw. I just don't understand why Fielder feels the need to play Kira, uh, Moira here. Like, I feel like Fielder can just play Ana and get more value. As much as you have the threat of, like, the Hanzo, you can't really die to just the Tracer. If they were playing, like... I like the Moira Kiriko if they're going to play, like, Tracer Sombra Winston, or they're just going to play, like, a super hard die because your backline becomes then impossible to kill, but... They're gonna play Sigma Hanzo. I'm just gonna just play Anna, and then you can heal the ball from range. Like the Moira doesn't really offer a lot here. It was something around dive survivability, and that's it, right? Like I understand it when it's dive survivability, but I don't think the survivability is needed here. Do you think the Moira tick killing or more? No, 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 because the the extra tick killing it doesn't even exist in the game yet for this patch. Like ball, ball is suboptimal pick. It's just a greedy pick. And like you're really relying on being able to like kill the backline, but last year being on Brig is like so bad for the ball sombra. Like. This brig here is just so difficult for the ball summer composition to deal with. And like, ba like Babel is like really well set up here. This was an interesting idea where he's just like setting up. And as soon as anyone goes near Babel, Dante, Dante is already counter diving, throwing the matrix. So I, as much as we can look at this and be like, Atlanta Rain is throwing, you need to give credit to the gladiators for reacting properly. Dante switched off the Sigma being like, Sigma is just going to get ignored here or isolated, and Lashra going over to the Brig, like, they literally did the perfect counters to what the Atlanta Rain were throwing at him. Lip having a hard time with Kai, and that's why the Hanzo was good against this Sombra. Like, look at how long Babel lives for here. He gets solo EMP'd with mines. Everything. Yeah, like Babel's just fucking chilling up here. I think he used his shift at the wrong time. Yeah, if he had saved his shift for this slam, he probably would have lived. He might have lived if he had saved if he had saved that shift for the right time. So that was a, maybe a little bit of a misfire on the uh, ability usage. The hack on this mega is also a big deal, by the way. Like, you can see Donghack is, like, rotating around this mega pack a lot. And also, you know, the gladiators can't use it. Yeah, 
that defense matrix on him. So again, the gladiators are doing a really decent job of negating these dives. Well, Dante was doing with the Junker. I have no idea. I can't, I can't defend the Junker Queen. As I said on the broadcast, I, it, it literally doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what he was trying to do with that. Like maybe he thinks the Junker Queen commanding shout, the temporary health can help his team live, but obviously it just doesn't. I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of better options. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Oh my god. Jesus, that clip on the lip was actually disgusting. Seemed like a mental boom moment. Like... Goodbye, Donghack. <laughs> ah, classic. I think he just thought no Suzu Junker at all will go hard, but there's so like, what was it against? It was against like a Winston Tracer Sombra. It's so hard to hit Junker Queen Ultimate against that, and like I'm pretty sure when Sombra translocates back, she cleanses herself. Tracer has a recall. Winston was in Primal when he hit it. Like it just, he threw his ultimate. It only hit a Primaling Monkey, so it just like didn't work. Donghack Sigma, yo. Obviously not working. I'm, I'm not in love with the Vigilante Fielder setup right now, honestly. I, I think it should work and it is good, but something about it right now, it just feels like it's not synergizing in the way you think. Because they're both insane players, but it just doesn't feel like, especially when you pair that with like Donghack forcing ball, like... Something about it just isn't working as well. I think they'll probably work it out by the time it matters, but... Yeah, and I... Maybe they shouldn't have Donghak coming in the ball to play ball in the idea that if he needs to switch over to the Sigma, it's not as good, but maybe Donghak Sigma's good. I actually don't really know. I guess the Jung Queen can displace ball and win some with knife. Not really. Like, the the answer is not really. Uh, because they very rarely get pulled. They barely get pulled by the knife. They you also have to hit the knife against either of those characters, which is a lot more difficult than you think. All right, so with Donghak going to Sigma, Zelastra goes over to Zenyatta. I like this change. Oh, this is where Kai goes sicko made on Hanzo, right? In this scenario, as we're poking and pulling a minute and 30 seconds left, both support options still available for the rain too. So if anything scary happens, they're going to be... Why is Kai on Hanzo? I'm pretty sure he was on Hanzo because of the Sombra and then lip switch Widow. So then he was stuck on the Hanzo. But then he just kind of pounded. I think if he, if he died without ultimate, he probably would have switched to Widow. But he just kind of dominates on the Hanzo. So like, why, why change? His number at the current moment, Pulse Walk comes in, doesn't manage to find Cater, and now there's only a minute left. Kai looking again for a shot. See a whiz, <sighs> a subtle hair trim on the brow. 55 seconds of zoom. Kai. This is something that I think Gladiators did really well in, in general, is just making the right hero swaps where they needed it, which is something that I think they, they actually struggled with in the group stage, right? When they played Boston. They should have won that match, in my opinion. If they had made some of the right swaps and, like, not played Zaya for the entirety of Second Point Blizzard World, that was, like, also, I don't know why they decided to flux the solo Zen. If they had just gone to the right, fluxing the solo Ana, it would have been a lot better. Prime was hype. Solid casting last night, bro. Yo, thank you very much, Fargate. I appreciate it. Thank you for the one year. It was a, it was a, it was a fun tournament. Prime really lived up to expectations. Oh, and this is where Vigilante gets caught. Like, I think he has to stay here, but yeah, just gets caught. I think Lip gets carried by his Sombra play. All right, whoa, well, well, okay. No, Lip is one of the best hit scans in the world. The fact that he has one of the best Sombras in the world as well is something that not a lot of hit scans can say and is one of the things that they lean onto a lot just because they can do it. I would love to 
see if you would, actually would be, would If I could choose any hit scan in the world, I would probably choose Lip. To be a part of my team, I would I would almost certainly choose Lip. That's also very funny. I mean, you know, Favelle's Fitz? Well, no, absolutely not Fitz. Shy? I like the Sombra... I like the Sombra look as well, having uh, from Lip. But I think Kai and... Uh, Shy and Lip, it's close. It's close. I would still choose uh, Lip, I think. That'd be bringing out... The similar composition for the Atlanta Reign on the defensive end. Gladiators, though, bringing out... The Sigma, again, Dante did play it a little bit, and I think on the offensive end, it's, like, much easier to pilot because you don't have to worry about all the flanks that they were going to be dealing with. Zoni said he'd rather have a main melee than a prom if you had to choose. Well, yeah, but that's, like, I would absolutely... I would just rather have both, right? This is a preseason event, what it feels like. We should have a main melee, and we should have a preseason. Like, we should have a mini tournament before the midseason. ...to where there's going to be a Sombra. Like, here, again, you know exactly where it is. This time, though, three men dive on you. It's very hard to work with. Yep, and, and again, it's putting so much pressure on Sakai to to almost make sure that they are spread too thin. Like, it's just this constant band. You're on crack if you think Lip wasn't the best. Oh, well, okay. Wait. Lip is definitely not the best Sojin. Lip was not the best Sojin last year. Just, he just wasn't. Proper Shy and Edison all diffed on, uh, on Sojin last year over Lip. I, I'm a Lip simp through and true. And Lip is great and he was, he was good, but he was not the best Sojin last year. Shy literally almost carried the Hongjo spark to success in the midseason madness playing Sojin. Todd takes a 15k. I don't know what you guys are smoking. I don't know what you guys are smoking to think that Lip was just like better than those three players. Shots. I wonder if we do see like any And you could definitely make the argument that the only reason Lip's Sojin wasn't as highlighted is because his team sucks, but that's part of it, right? Like if if his team sucks. That sucks for him, but he can't be considered when you literally had like Edison, Proper, and Shy just going fucking mental in the playoffs. Do you believe in Edison again this year? I cannot speak because if I speak, then Dallas fans will hate me. The way Dante was playing Diva was really good to the point where these dives from the Atlanta Reign weren't getting that value and you could pocket the backline a little bit easier. But here, I guess you would just want more of like a front loaded positioning instead of something like a Diva where you're kind of moving around the map as much as you want. And as this payload looks around the corner... Oh. Like, cousin gives a shit about Dallas opinions, yeah. Hey, like, here's the thing. I, I, I doubted Edison heading into the year. He he di he proved me wrong in a big way, especially in the playoffs. He was, he was, as I said, I put him in the list of one of the best Sojourns last year because of how fucking ridiculous he was in the playoffs. Edison was, Edison lived up to everything that Dallas needed him to be, and that's why they won a championship. Edison did his job. I, I can't, I, I honestly, like, all jokes aside, I can't doubt Edison heading into this year because I did last year and he proved me wrong. So I, I absolutely have no problem with them going with Edison for hitscan. Um, as much as, like, my brain still tells me no, like, it, 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 you have to. Like, yeah, you have to believe in Edison. Kai ain't gonna survive through that, as you did see at least a few recovery shots onto Dante to keep them going. Now with a minute and 55 seconds, it's half the time. And they've only managed to gain half the distance. And proved everyone wrong, yeah. And, like, anyone who says that Edison was not good last year is just wrong. Like, Edison was fucking... Like, especially in the playoffs, right? Like, you, maybe you can make arguments for in other situations. They tried to play Gurio here and there. And, we like, Edison Widow is something that I also don't think we saw. Which is kind of, like, it's hard to be a hitscan player who doesn't play that much Widow. But, at the end of the day, his Sojin was one of the reasons that Dallas Fuel won the championship. So... We'll see a different... I, I agree with you, Connor, but be young. I, I agree with you that their team was in a much different place last year that enabled Edison to be as dominant. But, and like this year will be a very different story and you don't think Edison will live up to the hype. I can be I can be right on there on board with you and that's what my heart is saying. But I also, I think that's just disingenuous and unfair to Edison and Dallas to say that because we, we literally did that all of last year and they proved us wrong. So at some point, you just have to start believing in what Rush is cooking. And we'll see. We'll we'll let the results tell the tale. So they're giving space for now for re-entry, a great nade for keeping them topped up on Dante as the EMP hits on. Oh my Kai. Lip has another EMP. Yeah, Lip. 
I think the thing that Lip does better than any other Sombra is that he his ability and understanding of when to just charge and shoot at people. Like some other Sombras, the the mistake that they make is like they go for the greedy pick to try and get like maximum value, and then they have to recall really early. But the thing is, Lip is just content with just like just some ticky tack damage on the side, ticky tack damage on the side. But he very rarely recalls. Like, he just plays in a way in which he's just annoying on the side. Like this stuff, right? Like, he never really tries to hack and shoot people in a situation where he's going to have to instantly recall. And that's why I think his his uh, his EMP charge is so strong. Dude, that was so unfortunate by Stalker. He like fell off of the sil uh, the silo. Ooh, okay. Donghak goes over the Winston. Yeah, Donghak doesn't look comfortable on this map. Like, in general, it doesn't feel like he knows what to do. Ball, can, ball is very difficult against the Brig. And that's sort of why I don't like the Donghak in and the ball setup here. Is if the opposition team just goes Brig, I think you instantly just start losing value. That's the thing that makes, like, Sigma double flex so strong here is that there are, there are ways to deal with it, but it's... None of them are great, right? It's not a well-rounded comp. Uh, like, the ball is not perfectly well-rounded. Stalker, calm down, dude. Stalker is just, like, silently being dominant for Atlanta every time as well. That was another EMP by Lip, by the way. This is going to be Gladiator's last fight. And because Atlanta Rain won that fight off just the EMP, they do have a pretty decent ultimate economy to counteract what Atlanta Gladiator, or what Los Angeles Gladiators are going to be bringing to the table. The big thing, though, is going to be that pulse bomb from Kevster. Can he find that back line? I feel like Stalker needs to work on his pulse bombs. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Oh. They I think they had to Yeah, they the nano Cassidy and to counter the nano Winston. Works like a charm. Now they only have vigilante transcendence. Oh, Donghat got slapped. Yeah. Honestly, I, I haven't been super impressed with Donghack Winston so far. Obviously, his ball is his expected best thing, but he did struggle on Winston when we saw him play it from time to time. Main tank experience, dude. Main tank's got fucking pounded. That sleep probably lost the land of the map. Yeah, Atlanta were probably in a pretty good spot. But they still get the team fight, right? Like, I think uh, Vigilante does a good job of holding onto it, but... I think they might over... I think they overcommitted on that uh, Transcendence. They were trying to find so much value in that Transcendence that they just didn't find. And, like, you really question why, right? Like, how did they not... The fact that they just didn't find a kill here is kind of crazy. Like, the back line is right here. They have no ultimates to counter this Transcendence. I think people just must have missed shots. And I guess they are playing like an Anna Brig, which is just so much healing. And the Atlanta came, come does it. Oh, Donghat got hit by that bomb as well. Raynan not having a good monkey. Well, here's the thing. I don't think Donghat's a bad monkey. Don't, don't, don't get me twisted like that. I just don't think Donghat is putting up the same level of performance that, you know, Atlanta's going to need from him on the Winston against, like, Fearless and Smurf and fucking all the best Winstons in the world, right? Some ones, right? Like, I, I, I haven't seen that from Donghak on the Winston. And it might be one of those things where people are like, oh, well, it's hard to compare him to the best Winstons in the world. That's what he needs to be. He needs to be one of the best Winstons in the world. Another high-value EMP, dude. Like, this is actually something that Lips improved at a lot. Is like, his EMPs are usually incredibly valuable, and he just, like... He always at least isolates one target, and the follow-through is always there for the rain. What do you think of Dante's Winston? It's very feast or famine, because I think... He plays so aggressively to sort of enable his team that when his team isn't really following through with him, it just looks like he's feeding. Like Dante goes from being like incredible and in how aggressive he's playing and like following up these dives to, dude, what the fuck is Dante doing? He's feeding. It doesn't feel like there's a middle ground.
Dude, it's crazy that the gladiators don't win. The, the, the Atlanta doesn't win. Dante's one health. And then Donghak guesses the wrong way. Like, he thinks Dante is going to go back. So they, they kill a bunch of people. Dante gets stuck. He's one health. They don't hit the shots to be able to close him out. Donghak and... First of all, Donghak, instead of going for Lastra on the brig, Donghak goes for the D.Va. Guesses the wrong way. And then the Nano comes out, hits Dante, and then Donghak, like, runs into the back line, primals, and gets slept. So he just needs to live at this point. And then Kai gets the high noon to just sort of help him live. And what this whole time, Donghak's getting bullied. And then the Lastro rally. I think at this point, if if Atlanta Rain had the presence of mind, they should have disengaged. I feel like when you see that rally go out, as much as it's a 4v5, when you're playing this composition, potentially just disengage. But they use the EMP instead into a rally and they just can't follow it up right there's just too much damage and like that just gives kai the freedom to just walk up do whatever he wants and then what happens is they end up getting punished for this uh, aggression dong hack just goes aggressive i i don't really understand why dong hack went this aggressive but because he goes so aggressive he gets pulsed they have to use the transcendence but they just don't really have the damage to kill anything with this setup and yeah, it just, they just can't find the picks. The Paulson goes wide. Like, literally everything that could have gone wrong for Atlanta went wrong in this setup. It's a huge beef, yeah. It was well played by the Gladiators, and like, it's not the worst play by Atlanta. They just, they just didn't get the picks. And gladiators close it out. How on earth did they do that? There was no business that gladiators had. I feel like Lip should have just died instead of taking the translocator back to Narnia. Yeah, I can argue that. I, I can say that as well, but it's easy to say in hindsight. Is Rhino in Toronto now? No, Rhino is not signed. He, I, he had, uh, he cited personal health issues. Um, that he was struggling with his lower back, that he wasn't able to play in the league this year. And I think one of the things that I would like to know about going into this match in particular is do we continue to see Kai on um, the Hanzo? Because I think the Hanzo has been the thing, the linchpin that has really, really stopped Lip from getting the value. Like, we know Lip to be this incredibly talented Sombra player, right? Any, of, any news about the VOD viewer? No. I haven't heard anything. Because we don't even know what platform we're streaming on. Recon darts, finding him in these areas. Like, is that going to be something that Kai continues to do as we go into this Fish Bronze map? Because it was a big highlight to why they were able to win uh, Havana specifically. And the composition is something we really want to be, you know, keen on because we talked a lot about the last time we were here about the positional advantage. We uh -huh. saw it on several occasions and how they played. Mod View are now only available on Switch. Yo. What is that, 30 FPS? Wait, is it, isn't like the Switch like locked at 60 FPS? Or is it 30 FPS? I think it's 60 FPS. Are we getting a new game mode in Season 5? I believe so, yeah. I think they said that it will be in the Overwatch League at some point. Glad seemed like they will be hard capped by Dante's comfort on the tank roll, for better or worse. When Dante is popping, Glad seems unstoppable, and then Dante goes sig. Okay, with that said, Dante fucking did it again. This motherfucker, every single time, we're like, ah, Dante, he's going to be the crutch for this team. Every time we go to the playoffs or matches that actually matter, Dante is clutch. Dante has never actually failed people, right? And you can say, oh, they lost to Florida. But they, the fact that they were even in the finals against Florida was incredible. So until Dante actually disappoints me one time, I'm going to stop doubting Dante. So Dante comes out the Ramatra. So this is actually interesting. So they, they did this uh, multiple times where he starts on the Ramatra and if he wins the fight, he will keep it. And it worked really well against Houston. But against Atlanta and in the finals against the Florida Mayhem, as soon as he died the first time and he lost that first fight, he switches over to Winston. In that match against Florida, I was, when he switched Winston, I was like, oh shit, this series is over. But then he ended up like popping off. So I was like, okay. 
Dante Ram versus Houston. Houston just didn't really know how to stop Dante from just walking into the back line. And it's kind of hard to see with the, the YouTube viewer and the fact the pubs that we saw. But like, yeah, Dante just like every single fight, it felt like Dante just killed both backliners. <laughs> Houston would dive past Dante and then Dante would just walk into the back line, punch a bunch of people, and then he would just win the fight. Yeah, the lip EMP is just too strong. Did funny I should start on Lucio, right? Yeah, start on Lucio, then switches over to the Brig. I think the Brig is the right swap against the against the Sombra. The Brig is just so important because the Brig rally and just healing is just very oppressive. The packs, the single target healing. Oh my God, Stalker! Dude, Stalker is emotionless. I'm starting to think the less emotions you have, the better Overwatch player you are. Kai just doesn't get to play yet. Kai's just, and that's the problem with playing Cassidy into these like hyper dives. Someone begs to differ. I guess that's true. Exceptions to the rule. Yeah, and this is the problem when you play a song, but like, I feel like Babel and Kai were just not in the right positions to deal with that. I feel like they need to be in a more defensive setup. Why do you think uh, Mayhem played Brig a lot more into Defiant and not Glads? Um... I don't know. It's an interesting question. I think the Brig, the the way that the Toronto Defiant played is very different to the Gladiators. I I feel like Toronto was a lot more of an aggressive team where the Brig gets more value. While against the Gladiators, I feel like Gladiators aren't as aggressive. So I value, yeah, they, like Toronto use Sombra every now and then and like, I don't know. It just, to me, it just feels like they play the Brig wherever they th think that they can get value. Do you feel like you saw enough Donghag and Hawk to get a good measure of who taking the top spot? I think it'll literally come down to the heroes that are being played. Hawk will come in if they want to play like Diva or Matra and Donghag will play if they're playing Winston Bowl. I don't think it's any deeper than that. This EMP was a thunker to me. I don't really know how he was expecting anyone on his team to follow through. That was that was a memp right there from Lip. Do you think most teams will avoid maps like Shambhali and Antarctic Peninsula? In general, people avoid new maps just because you have less experience and less time to practice. Dude, that was such a good sleep. Babel just came alive every now and then. Le Memp was only good two seasons ago. Nice Memp. I feel like Chio is very underwhelming. Um, I disagree. Primarily because I think Chio won almost every single map that he was in. The maps that Atlanta lost so far were the ones where Vigilante played. I for one miss the Dante Sombra. <laughs> Dude, people, Dante Sombra still lives rent free in people's brains. Has Shio ever looked spectacular outside of Lucio? Well, he's only ever really being required to play Lucio. His Briggs also very good. But yeah, like, I don't know. That's kind of the heroes that Shio's needed to play. I kind of wish Dante was still a DPS. The The not so nice truth is that Dante DPS, if Dante was still on DPS, he would have had to improve dramatically to be able to get playtime. He was a DPS player and he didn't get played. Um, so 
Like, maybe some team would have taken a gamble on Dante DPS, and it could have been great. As I said, never doubt Dante DPS, but him switching over to tank has given him a starter spot on the Gladiators. Dude, yeah, losing the card, playing around the card is such an important thing. Yeah, that, that stopping of the bot was actually such a big play. So it means that the Gladiators did not get the advantage, and that has a long-term effect here. Did Space retire? No, Space just didn't get signed for this year. He sort of went MIA in the offseason, but he's like official. He, I, from what it sounds like, is because of the accusations against him, uh, he wasn't. He wanted to wait until he was fully cleared before he started like posting LFTs and sort of putting himself out there. Didn't realize that it happened. I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but essentially someone came out with claims against him um, with some, like... Uh, God, I it really... It's, there were some accusations that came out against him uh, and his character. You can go Google it yourself if you want. Uh, and there, it ended up being not substantiated with any evidence or proof and stuff like that. But throughout that entire time, Space was... Obviously, a lot of people were really upset at Space and Space... You know, the Gladiators, uh, sorry, the, what team was he on last year? It was the Gladiators, yeah, the Gladiators, uh, didn't want to play him during that time. He was kind of, like, suspended. Yeah, they, the rally here is crazy by the Gladiators. I, I don't love this rally. Like, I, I don't... Like, it was an interesting... Oh, this was such a beef. This beef was so bad. Like, Kai... This would happen... Like, Kai kills kills Filder here, like, 9 out of 10 times. But that was such a bad miss. Like, if he gets that kill, like, this is a very different fight. And they could potentially win that team fight and win the map. KSP would have hit those. Bring back your boy KSP. Oh my god. Donghack literally disappeared. Didn't even get to primal. The backline has to get out for Atlanta here. I think too many people playing cart. Like, I, I, I feel like Gladiators are sort of walking here with a false sense of security that they're not going to have a fight here. Like, they're all just sort of standing on the card. It doesn't feel like they're ready for it. Like, they don't realize that they are surrounded. Like, literally, the backline's above you. The trace is behind you. The Sombra is literally inside of you, dropping an EMP. They just were not ready for that at level of aggression. And it's, like, great play by Atlanta. And the things that, like, made Atlanta look such, so strong as a team is they just... They never really take their foot off the gas. And especially playing around Lip Sombra, just hard to deal with. I wasn't in love with the Donghag Winston. Yeah, I said the same thing. Like, Donghag Winston's fine, but it hasn't instilled, like, great confidence in his uh, play so far. That was such a good find by Funny Astro. Make sure that if 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 he didn't find him, there easily could have been a stick on the Kai. Donghack, Donghack Primal doing work. I don't know how he found two kills with that Primal, but big play. Yeah, 
Walker's back on the point. He's trying to get as much as he can out of this stall, potentially to get someone back. Pump? I don't think it's going to be enough. Nope. Capster's heroics are not there. And Rich, we're going to another map five. Oh my goodness, gamers. If you're not on the edge of your seat and you're not telling everybody to come here to see another map five, I don't know. Here we go. We go on to map five. Uh, 2-2, two, two, baby. At a position where brackets are about to be shattered completely, right? Where, where just completely... Oh. No one Why does Liv live inside his camera? He probably plays very close to the camera. There are a lot of players who, like, literally have their, their eyeballs glued to the monitor. A lot of DPS players, and it's more common in, like, Valorant and, like, Apex, where you need to see a lot of fine things. In Overwatch, that doesn't really happen as much, but there's a lot of players that are, like, very close to the screen. They literally play, like, this close to their screen. Like... So many map fives this week. Honestly, it was a great weekend of matches. There's li literally nothing to complain about with the matches this weekend. For all of us, just different teams, different Do you think people are slightly riding off Funny Astro before this tournament? No, I think Funny Astro... Funny Astro is always going to be a Lucio player in this league. Every time, he's always a great Lucio. If you, if anyone said, you know, last week or from the group stage, Funny Astro is washed, I would just like laugh at them. Like Funny Astro is not washed. His Lucio is always high impact. Yes, he can get punished for it in certain series, but I think that's usually a reflection of how the team is going. Prime qualifiers were met. Well, there were just so many games that weren't competitive, which was the problem with the group stage. I feel like Kevstar has a absurdly high pol pulse multi kill percent. Yeah, it's just a very smart tracer player. So Donghak comes out on the Ramatra, which is interesting here. And they play the Ramatra ball, and Dante comes out on the, the Brig Winston, which I think is really bad for them. Like, this Gladiator setup is just way worse than the Atlanta Rain setup, in my opinion. Because Brig just doesn't find too much value. I don't like Brig versus Ramatra. It's a good flank by Kai. Fly taking the off angle. They just haven't been able to punish it. I think they were expecting Bowl. Yeah, I think so. I think they were expecting a dive as well. They were expecting them to play Winston. With Donghak in the lineup, I think that's a safe bet as well. But hey, they end up winning the first fight. I don't know why Hawk played so little. It's just not an off-tank meta. Just honestly, it, it isn't. It's a very heavy Winston meta. Cat. Don't get on the desk. No, I keep picking you up. It means you're not allowed here. I really didn't understand this decision. Like, this decision feels so bad by Atlanta. Like, I think every person under the sun knows that trying to walk up that staircase versus a dive composition, it's never going to go well. Someone's going to get booped. Someone's going to get slept. You're walking up like a choke with no railing. to work with in this next fight and we're getting to the point of last fight territory yeah and it's again 50 percent approaching they hit lip a third yeah this is just this just is not close so far for atlanta they have not been able to play the brawl it's very surprising they decided to play the brawl into this anyway i mean they focus lip lip is currently zero zero and three and it's not like his fault or anything it's just that the dive is immaculate right now from the los angeles gladiators i mean this is probably who do you think would be number one in day in apac I've still got Dallas. No, I would I would go for Hongzhou over Dallas. Hongzhou are stacked. But we also don't know what all of APAC looks like. He was expecting Lip to strafe left. He was expecting him to zig, but he zagged. Oh my god. He got the annihilation down. Yeah. That was unfortunate for the Atlanta rain because they like they had to use the sound barrier just because of how many kills the gladiators got. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is that they took that away 
because if they didn't, that could have been a completely different fight. As we see Lashro going over to the Lucio, the Brigitte. Hit me out. Chengdu are going to win. Oh, yeah. What do you like about Chengdu's roster that makes you think they're going to win? Potentially check the Tracer as well as Glider is here with this high name can go in aggressive. I don't know how Chio kills Kevsley here. That was like the strangest kill. It's going to be a really, really big opportunity to continue closing the gap percentage wise. Another sleep on to Dante, knocking them outside of the barrier as well. The damage is just far too high and that mitigates. Jim Moo clears on Farah and Genji. You can't kill a team of ghosts. Okay, well, I, I like that logic. You can't kill that what you don't know, understand, or know. Dude, look at this. Look at this Cassidy 1v1. Respect the duel. Fucking electric cowboy boogaloo. It's like a, it's like those Li Zhang Tower DM games. I also think Cassidy players I just have too much hubris with the damage reduction of high noon the number of times we saw cassidy's high noons and then just like walk into the open and then just get stuck and die <laughs> was very high you changing your tier list after watching this match yeah absolutely well i i didn't really have a tier list at this point um i haven't done my power rankings i will be doing them later but um yeah, it, obviously Florida Mayhem. You have to put Florida Mayhem a lot higher than you expected. Like, I was expecting to put Florida around, like, five. But I think they've gone much higher after the tournament. Kester went insane. Yes, Kester went insane all weekend, honestly. Dude, I dude, this fight is fucking crazy. Dude, this Ajax. Look at this Ajax. Last show, Chio beats and he wants to land on this ledge and he gets booped up at the last second by Last show. That was such a good play by Last show. Dude, while Kevster is alive, anything is possible. Absolutely ridiculous fight. You're like four different team wins, dude. People were just so confident that everyone was just throwing ults at the problem. Good nano onto the EMP. Like that was actually so clutch. Dante's dead though. Like, how does Kevster and Kai find two at the end of this fight? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, Atlanta have, like, a three, two-player advantage, and then somehow Kevster and Kai find picks. Babel was also criminally under the radar. Oh, then the C9 at the last second. Um, I think uh, Gladiators are in trouble anyway. Um, here's the thing. I think Babel had some really good moments, but he also like did a bunch of feeding. And it's not really just him, but he was like, the backline was getting bullied by the Gladiators in some of these maps. But he sort of like was so hot and cold. He had some crazy maps, but he also had some maps where he was just struggling to do anything. Point was fucking wild, dude. That, like, I was watching... I, I like, co-streamed that live on my stream, and we were just yelling at the monitor. We were just fucking screaming. Like, it was actually the craziest fight ever. Hard to blame Babel for dying? You can absolutely buy, blame Babel for dying, right? Like, it's not just, yeah, he needs the support, but... At some point, like he was, sometimes he wasn't hitting the sleep. Sometimes he was. Sometimes he was a little out of position. Sometimes he wasn't. Right? Like, you gotta take the good with the bad. Oh my god, they're so lucky a car wasn't coming when that happened, but doesn't really matter. The dong hack patented patented ball. Last year came out on the brig though, recognizing that they're probably gonna play the dive and the sombra. So gladiators are in a good a good spot to win this with the comp setup that they have with the casting and the the brig. That was some drunk driving by Donghack. That was like, 
That was so bad. He did not need to go into that room. Yet he did. And then enables Kai to just like walk out after that and just tap heads. Glad's win if Costa if you were subbed in. Honest opinion. <laughs> yeah, you know, sub me in for Lastro. I'm way better than that fraud. Sex big dick. <laughs> Extremely devastating to lose that. Now you see a flanking position by Kai with recovery from Lastro. Dante has to bail. They can't stick close, but Kai gets fielder. Chio Dude, Kai is going crazy in this map so far. They have single-handedly been able to take both of these fights with the assistance of Dante up front. Though, there's some counter action here by two, and they are still managing the game. Glad to win finals if Kev hits one more pause bomb. I feel like putting more weight onto Kev is probably not fair. As I said, I think Glad's played well. They they straight up just I think Florida were on a different level than everyone else in this tournament. I, I don't even think you can blame the Gladiators. Gladiators played well and they sort of pushed them to the edge a little bit with some of their compositions. But at the end of the day, like I don't really blame Gladiators for the loss. I give props to the Florida May for him for playing so well. Who's your way too early MVP? I'm gonna go Lip, Kevster, or someone would be my way too early MVPs. Just from what we've seen so far, I would put Proper in there again. When we start to see the shock going up, RuPaul, I don't think it's a poor play is gonna win it. I don't think support play is going to win MVP. The the metas would have to be so support defined, kind of like we saw in this. Like, the, you'd have to have metas exactly like this problem where the support players are like, skill expression is heavily shown. But... If it was supported, it would be Shu? No. My take right now is I think Shu is being overvalued right now. People act like Shu just like clears all these other flex supports. Shu is probably one of the best flex supports. He's in the list, right? He's in the short list of best flex supports. But I think people act like Shu is miles ahead of everyone else. And I don't think that's true anymore. I think there is like... You got Shu, you got Filder, you got uh, fucking RuPaul playing his fucking heart out. You got so many good flex supports in this league that I don't think you can just be like, Shu clears, right? If we go into a flex support meta, I don't think Shu is just the default best MVP. Twilight, yeah, Twilight, like, I, there's so many that we're not even remembering, right? UV, yeah, UV has, has an incredible Ana as well, right? Like... I think Shu was ever far ahead. Some people voted for Shu, and I still think this... To me, this is shocking. Like, people voted Shu MVP. Was it last year? Was it last year or the year before? I remember molding out of control. I think it was 2021 when people... People were voting Shu for MVP, and that was just... That was crazy to me, that people were choosing Shu to be MVP. Like... He had... I, it was the most, like, recency bias vote that we had ever had. Because literally just because of those few Baptiste clips he had, which were bonkers, don't get me wrong. But like, yeah, like people literally just remembered what happened a week ago. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to vote for shoot. Like it was crazy to me. People forgot that like in the monthly melee, uh, the May melee of that year, like Shu was not good in the first tournament. Uh, he, I think he was playing on ping all that stuff, but like he, he was still was not playing well, right? Who won? Uh, yeah, and like, that was the year that Leave went fucking crazy. Like, I just, I just couldn't understand how, ooh, Lippy and P hits three. I, I just couldn't understand how you could choose Shu over Leave. Like, Leave, like, carried Chengdu. Somehow, he carried that team to success. And then, like, if it wasn't going to go to Leave, it should have gone to Lip, right? Like...
another one for us to reach the end all be all right I, as I said, I think that is the problem with this ball Sombra comp right now. I think if the other team just plays Brig, like, has it, I don't think Atlanta has won a map where they've tried to play ball where Gladiators have played Brig. It just feels like the Brig just does too much to shut down this Atlanta rain, like, ball setup. I mean, this is a matchup that is, again, on a knife's edge. I think Kai and Kebster are currently playing out of their skull pieces. It yeah. is insane statistically with both of these players they both have the same damage share at 20 29 man it's really gonna suck if the league doesn't get back to his 2021 self this year the rumors from what we've seen of like them playing ranked and stuff like that and what they've been showing is that leave and shy look to be in pretty good form which i really hope leave shy is in good form because it's like oh man i just want to see leave shy play against some of the best teams in the world on like LAN. that's all i that's all i dream for because leave shy is just gonna be bonkers All right, we got the Sombra again. It's kind of interesting how Lip didn't play much hit scan. Like, I wonder if the game is very different if they just played Lip, uh, if they just mirrored the compositions. They both just played, like, if they forced Lastro, like, you, you almost have to make the argument, right? If you're Atlanta, should you have played Lip on Cassidy, recognizing that Lastro was playing Brick? You know that Kai's not going to switch off of Cassidy. You know Lastro isn't going to want to play Lucio. If you just put Lip on the Cassidy... They don't have a good enough dive with because they're not like putting enough resource into it. Like you just take that head to head battle and you just believe in your team to win it. Like if it, it felt like the Atlanta was getting kind of counted on this Sombra comp just because of how strong Brig is into that matchup. That it's not like you need to keep playing the Sombra because Lip is not a better hit, the best hit scan. I think Lip can be better than, uh, Lip can match, if not be better than Kai. So. Because I think the maps, most of the maps that Atlanta won, what were the maps? Didn't Lip, Lip didn't really play much Sombra on the maps that they won, am I correct? I'm trying to remember what first map was. I don't know, I'm, I might just be making shit up there, but... Yeah, oh, that's right. He did play a lot of Sombra and Elias. You're right. Astro was nuts. Yeah, Astro had some really big clutch moments on the Lucia. Yeah, that's that's his job on the roster, right? So it's it's good to see him sort of being able to show that because we we've seen situations where like if we end up in a double flex support meta, I don't expect uh, expect to see much funny Astro or even just like a not a big Lucio meta. I don't expect expect to see much Astro. Good EMP. And the nade follow-up on that as well is just fucking crazy. Like, that's the upside of that Sombra composition, right? When you have that EMP and when you can pull it off, like, it just looks really good. But in the neutral, I feel like they're just losing out. just the emp which is great and they are able to keep their other ultimates and continue to cycle them which is what atlanta it was also in summer on esperanza i get i think lip just played a shit ton of sombra just this entire series which you know that's obviously what atlanta wanted to play and that's their identity and they go down playing that i have no problem with it but it just makes you think of like maybe atlanta should have been willing to concede their i feel like he's oh they beat they used beat and primal to win this fight i guess it's not the worst thing in the world because that was a rally nano not that Astro is a one trick. He's he's not a one trick. Like he can play the Brig and he can play the Mercy if necessary. But like Brig Mercy haven't really been hard meta, and I, it sounds like they prefer to have Lastro to come in to play the Brig because I think Lastro has a very good Brig, but Lastro also has the ability to flex if a team throws something weird at you. I don't know how Kai finds Stalker here. This is such an important kill, right? Like, I, how does this happen? Like, that's so... That kill is so important for the Gladiators because they don't have any support ultimates. Their chances of winning this fight is quite difficult. And if they are going to win it, it was going to cost a lot of resources, right? But because he gets that fight, they pretty much win this fight for free. Then they get the cleanup. They get, end up getting like 20%. Like, such an important moment for Kai to get a kill. Was Atlanta having a relatively weak group apart of why they were rated so high? No, well, like, here's the thing. 
we're one series, like we're one team fight away from Atlanta beating Gladiators, probably going on to beat Houston. Uh, obviously, that'd be contentious with the Gladiators. Like we're like realistically one team fight away from Atlanta making the grand finals and Gladiators going in hard in the first round. And our narratives of Atlanta are one of the best and Gladiators are struggling, remaining intact, right? So that's why you need to like look at the results of the matches, not just the scoreline and who beat who and just ignore everything that happened in the matches, right? Atlanta aren't a bad team because they lost to the Gladiators in the first round. This was a close series. Um, and I still am just as high on Atlanta as I am because Atlanta's big strength is that they have so much depth in their roster. They might not have as much in-server flexibility, but their roster is so deep. Yeah, like maybe, like for all we know, like we could be going, like if Glad's lost this this map, some people would still be saying, oh, Glad's are not going to be good this year, right? It's just about not knee-jerk reaction to whatever the results are. It's the same thing with Boston. Like some people are like, oh, see, Custer was right. You know, he's going to be so smug that Boston suck because they lost first round. It's like they lost to a really strong Toronto Defiant squad. Like Boston didn't look bad. I think you saw some of the points that I was making about Boston not being that strong, but Boston are fine. Like they, they still look good. They're still a good team. Didn't you knee jerk when Glad's got uh women think? No, I didn't knee jerk. They were doing bad in scrims and they were also like, the reason, oh, this is the Glad's closing it out. The reason I was down on Glad's is not because of one scrim result. It was because multiple people came out and said that Gladiators weren't doing well in scrims. But we like we were like, oh, Glad's aren't doing well in scrims. That's not good. But we didn't say Glad's are going to be bad in the year, right? But, and this is why, because Gladiators, they have the potential on this roster, right? And Dante and Kai shutting the people up. Going crazy, right? Scream Guts always get you. It's always the way. Yeah, and Glad yeah, that, that's a more important thing other than the scrim box. Gladiators didn't look great in the group stage. They almost lost to Washington. They, they were one map away from Washington being in this bracket stage and not the Gladiators, right? Like... There's, there's other things on top of that that you need to keep in mind. Context. And let's look at the stats of your, the MVP of this match. As Tracer this match, he went 3.7 deaths per 10, nine, almost nine final blows. Like, look at those numbers. He's just so good. All right, and with that chat and YouTube, that's the first VOD review of the year. The LA Gladys take on the Atlanta Rain. It was probably one of the best matches that happened in the Pro-Am. It was an absolute banger. Obviously, this is how I do VOD reviews if you're first new to this. As much as I keep an eye on the match and we sort of like to talk about them, I like to break things down here and there. It's just fun talking about the league as a whole. So if you liked this and you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a shit ton more of these when we get regular season matches going on and we have a lot more good matches up, going on hey you guys didn't say shut up scott pretty much the whole time that's great uh but yeah thank you very much for watching up, i hope you guys enjoyed it have a great i guess couple of weeks downtime as we go in i'm going to be doing uh um, power scott. rankings i've got team previews and all that kind of stuff leading into april 27th up, when we have the overwatch league coming back shut up scott appreciate you all Love you so much, except for chat. Shut up, Scott. You are the worst. See you next time. Shut up, Scott.